Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 432. Written by Pepper Antique. James didn't like his new office. It wasn't that it was worse than his old office in the castle. It was nice for sure. It was larger by a large margin, especially since the old one had previously been a storage room. Or at least he thought it had been. It was also better lit, having actual fluorescent lights, with softening filters on them, up on the ceiling. It also had a decently large window which overlooked the parade ground outside, and the main gate beyond that. And the furniture was significantly nicer too. The chairs had better cushions and his chair even rolled. Plus the desk was one that he'd had commissioned in the city. No, he realized, it wasn't that he didn't like the office or its furnishings. Instead, he simply hated everything that came with it. The attached responsibilities and duties. The rank. He'd never wanted to be an officer. Hadn't even really cared to become an NCO if he was really honest. Though, like any enlisted soldier, he would never complain about more money and less people being above him. But to not only get a battlefield commission and then also get a promotion a little over a year and a half later? That was just way too much for him. And now he was commanding what was, at least technically, an entire garrison. Sure that garrison barely had enough people to fill a single company, much less an entire battalion or something. But coupled with also having civilian science staff and an, admittedly minimal, ambassadorial staff well, his plate was already overflowing. And that was to say nothing of his duties as a summoned hero, prince consort, and of course as a new, first-time, father of twins. Can't forget all the new remedial training. He reminded himself as he pondered the new levels of stress his life was undergoing now that the embassy was fully up and running, and working out all its kinks. Captain Greaves was rattling off a seemingly endless list of issues the building complex was having now that it was actually being used. Some of the plumbing in the barracks was backed up somehow. The multi-source generator in the science building was struggling to properly store energy in its reserve batteries, but only from its wind turbines. Some kind of local insect pest apparently thought the tomatoes they had growing in the hydroponics lab were delicious, and were devouring them from the inside, ruining crops that would help them remain self-sufficient. The list went on and on. He half listened as he also used his laptop to run through an online training that was meant to teach him how to properly approve and disapprove leave for soldiers at different ranks now. He had to approve and disapprove leave requests, including their attached safety assessments, in a world with actual dragons. The fact that dragons were typically tamed, and those few that weren't were solitary and preferred to live on mountains, didn't really change the fact that that was one of about a billion factors that had to be taken into consideration. And he had to determine leave status in a world like that. He didn't even know what a safe travel distance was for simple weekend passes. Ah hand the training in question was designed for soldier-to-soldier -soldier leave passes. Apparently the Navy used a completely different form. Oh yeah, so did the Air Force, Marines, and the one Coast Guardsman that were in the unit. That was about the 20th training course he'd done in just the past few days. And he had about a million left. James looked over to the right and out the window, to where Steve's new pen was. A ride on the large drake out into the countryside sounded damn good right now. Major? Greaves asked, interrupting his thoughts. Is it even possible to go AWOL when you're the commanding officer of the military in this world? He'd been wondering. Hum? He grunted as he turned back to look at her. Greaves put her hands behind her back, taking the tablet she was holding with them as she looked at him with an extra dose of judgment. Did you hear what I said sir? She said with a barely concealed smirk. Something about the water processing rig. He said. At least that was what it had sounded like it was about. She nodded. Well. At least you're mostly right. She admitted. The building that the processor is in sank about two inches after it took in its full capacity. She said plainly. It's within tolerance, but the engineers wanted it to be noted in case it continues sinking. He nodded. I'll see if I can shore up the ground underneath later. He said. The look on her face said that that wasn't quite the correct answer. What? He asked. Luckily he and Greaves had already had a closed-door session before. 
he told her plainly that he was out of his depth as a captain and that he would need her, as his XO, to tell him when he was making rookie mistakes. He had at least gotten one thing right then and required that she keep that out of sight of the other soldiers unless it was a life or death situation, but she was still supposed to help keep him in check. That's, not necessary, sir. She said slowly. James took a deep breath. You just said it was sinking. He reminded her. She nodded. Yes it sank. She corrected him. But with intolerance. He waited, expecting more. She sighed. It might not sink. She said. And even it does, or if it looks like it will, we have engineers and the equipment to stop it. Plus Pekes knows the same earth magic you do. She shrugged. Nowhere near as well. Obviously. But it was the one bit of magic he'd figured out before the desert. He can do it. James looked confused. Why not just do it now? He asked. We might. She admitted. He was about to ask what the issue was, but she continued before he could. If, the engineers think it's necessary. Okay? He said uncertainly. Greaves lips pressed into a thin line. James sighed as he looked up at the ceiling and began contemplating going AWOL again. What? He asked in exasperation. Sir. She began. Then she stepped forward and placed the tablet on one of the chairs opposite of him before placing her hands on the back of the chair and looking at him with even more judgment. Choi you need to learn to delegate. I. Um? He said, clearly not understanding what she was getting at. She took a deep breath as she slowly nodded. If you're delegating then who should be handling the simple aspects of preventative maintenance around here? She asked, knowing that he was a former striker mechanic and that the phrase might get through to him. Did the company commander at your old unit do oil changes and track installations on the vehicles sir? She asked sarcastically. James was annoyed at the dressing down. So naturally he went on the defensive. He did once for a competition. He said scornfully. And I'm sure that made for a good morale booster for all the wrench monkeys. She said sassily. But she'd seen a response like that coming. You know what I mean. James held up his hands in a placating gesture. Fine. He said. Let the engineers figure it out. Thank you. She said easily as she stood up. Me telling you all this is just to keep you informed. She said. The company can handle things like this. We only really need you to make the big decisions and sign the paperwork approving the necessary stuff. If that's all I'm good for then I'll get you a stamp with my name printed and signed. He said, mostly just to be an ass. And if I were a lesser officer I might just ask for one. She shot back. Or if I actually wanted your seat. You mean you don't? He asked, legitimately curious. Her eyebrows shot up almost to her hairline. You kidding sir? She asked rhetorically. I only signed up for this mission because I thought it was some psyops nonsense to scout for positions in intelligence or test for leaks or something. I thought they were fucking with us right up until I saw the massive glowing portal in the base basement. Then I let curiosity kill the cat. That actually caught him off guard. You didn't think this place was real? He asked, surprised. She pointed out the window where one of the soldiers was jogging away from a gout of flame that was jetting out of Steve's pen. Luckily they looked to be unharmed. James would have to look into why Steve had done that. Usually he was relaxed and peaceful as long as he was comfortable and fed. There was also a talon of Royal Griffin riders flying off in the distance, likely patrolling the city. Would you? She asked. Especially since we all signed on before all that werewolf stuff happened and magic started popping up on Earth. A. Fair. He conceded. Back on topic. She said as he turned back. Learn to start delegating. Now, speaking of werewolf stuff. Vickers and the moon people are leaving in three days. He nodded as he grabbed the folder that had been brought to him earlier. Yep. He confirmed easily as he opened it and looked at the report. 
successful live tests were confirmed last night. Several goats were sent over from our side. Then after a bunch of different linger times they successfully transited back. And he returns in one month. She said, probing his thoroughness in reading the plan. Yep. A meet and greet with the president and a few generals. He confirmed. Followed by a meeting with the wolves in Sturgis and an attempted olive branch meeting with the packs that managed to escape the event. She nodded approval. Then held up a finger. The colonel also added on a new bit. She said as she pulled a copy of the new information out of its file on her tablet and sent it to his computer. The powers that be also want him to meet with some of his old L1 operator buddies and see if he can recruit them. Though Vickers has voiced some doubt on that one. He still wants to do it. But he doubts it'll work. James bit his lip a bit. Not at the news, that didn't really surprise him. He knew they were going to try to strong-arm Vickers into doing more than he wanted to. They both expected that. It was why neither of them wanted the other to go back to Earth. Vickers was only really going back so he could help the folk over on Earth, and so he could jump on the proverbial grenade that the higher-ups really wanted to get James with. No, he was mad because the file she sent over caused the training he'd been working on to freeze up and show an error message. Something wrong? She asked as she saw his annoyance. James shook his head. No more than normal. He said dryly. The vicar's stuff isn't anything unexpected. Brass just wants more operators over here. And if they can get more were operators then even better. Now, what's the deal with the elder's detail? She grimaced as she looked back down at her tablet again. Great! He said as he expected another pain in his ass from whatever she was about to say. He didn't mention how the idea of not having Vickers around somehow felt dangerous. Like it was going to make them, and more precisely James himself, vulnerable. His eyebrows furrowed as he realized that. He would never admit that to the massive cat man. What do I have to do to get articled back down to private? He wondered as she began listing off the elders' requests for the trip. Maybe I can convince one of the soldiers to let me have a negligent discharge into their calf or something. He said, not realizing that he was thinking out loud. Ah, uh, sir? She asked in surprise and confusion. James froze, putting on his best poker face. Dot I didn't say anything. He said, plainly bluffing, after a moment. Continue. Besides, I'm the best shot in the unit besides Vickers. He thought as she hesitantly resumed with a raised eyebrow. Nobody would believe that.